Okay, folks, so this is just a quick video showing how to use a hardware MIDI controller to control various parameters inside Blender. So the first thing you'll need to do is install a, an add-on that's called AdRoots. It's this one right here. As you can see, I have it installed already. Okay, so I'm using this Akai, what is it? It's the MPD-218 MIDI controller. It's a very cheap basic controller, but it gets the job done. So once you've got your MIDI controller plugged in and you've got your add-on installed, you need to go over to here and set up your MIDI input, which I've already got set. It's the MPD-218. And it's got a number two by it. I don't know why it does. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to use the MIDI controller to control this uh, cube. So we go over to location. And the first movement we're going to do is going to be moving the, the, um, the cube on the Y axis. So you do right click in the location. And I should say, it doesn't matter where, you just have to do the right click somewhere in here. Right click, create real time route. Then you go over to this tab here and then drop this menu down. Let's just expand it a little bit to the side. And you can see we have already got the route added here. I'm going to use a MIDI knob, so a continuous controller. So over here, you select continuous controller. The MIDI channel is okay, it's channel one. And I'm gonna use controller number 22 because that's what the, that's the controller that my MIDI knob is outputting. And I'll show that at the end of the video, how, that, how to work out what controllers each hardware knob is outputting. Okay, um, wrap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say when your MIDI number is, uh, when your MIDI message is zero, we're going to have the cube. Um, let's see, let's have it 10 meters back. And when it's at 127, so when the, the knob is fully clockwise, it's going to be at the world origin. So I put zero here. And let's turn this on. Okay, now, in theory, if I tweak my knob, it's moving, but it's moving in the wrong axis. Now, the reason for that is that we have to go of up to here and change this index. So at the moment, it's doing the X axis. So let's just zero this out and now change the index to two. So it's now moved down, sorry, let's do to one. It's now moved down to this one. So now you can see my MIDI knob is now controlling that. Okay, let's add another one in. So let's now also do rotation. Let's do rotation on the Y axis. So again, right click, create real time route. We can close this one here. We're now dealing with this, the second one, which is number one, confusingly, of course. Uh, event type, again, continuous controller. Um, channel one is right. And this is going to be 20, 23. So I put that on. Um, let's turn it on. And we want to have wrap again. And this time we're going to go from zero to, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be radians or degrees, but let's just try. Let's put in 360 here. And again, let's do a quick test. Right, so that appears to be, I guess that must be radians. I'm not sure. Whatever, that's, a, that's something you'd have to work out when you're dealing with rotation. But anyway, now you're going to watch that I can actually simultaneously do two things at the same time, which normally isn't possible in, in Blender. I don't think you can do that. So, yeah, what's this useful for? Probably for most people, nothing. Um, I actually 
thought about needing it because I was working on a ge geometry nodes um, setup for uh, an object, and the the that object, the way it looked, um, what was happening within those geometry nodes was depending on an, on the movement of an empty, which was not part of um, that setup. So I had to keep moving, reselecting my empty, move my empty, see how the changes were, move back to my geometry nodes object, back and forth, back and forth. And I was thinking, well, this is a pain in the ass. It would be great just to be able to have like a hardware knob where I can move my empty on the it was it was on the y axis that I was moving it. If I can move it back and forward, and I can tweak my geometry nodes um, setup in order to uh, yeah not have to keep um, jumping around the interface. So yeah, I think there could be a lot of uses for this, but that's up to you to decide. Um, so that's the end of showing it how showing how it works. I'm just going to quickly show how to work out what MIDI control, what, what CC number your um, MIDI controller is outputting. So I'm using this a little app called MIDI View, which I think is PC and also Mac. Um, and um, what it does, if you see that when I tweak my controller, you can see that on the screen we get the the um, controller number, and over here we get the channel. So we have the channel, the value, and the controller number, and that's all you really need to know. So when you saw me putting in the controller number in Blender, that was this, it was this number here, twenty-two. If I move over to the next controller, it's twenty-three. 24, 25, etc., And then also if you want to use pads, keys, it gives a whole different load of messages. Yeah, that's it. Good luck.